Okay, so I'm Rufus from 7E and this is my music year review from this year on our topics that we've done. So basically, this is just going to be about a few things that we've covered. I've worked hard on this PowerPoint, so I hope you enjoy it. First of all, I have looked at the orchestra. So there's a picture of one. So the orchestra is essentially a group of instruments playing and harmonizing to make beautiful music. Uh, sizes of an orchestra can vary mainly down to things like just the string section or a quintet, so five playing at a time or a quartet, four playing at a time and etc. There are four main families. Family number one is strings, family number two is brass, family number three is woodwind and number four is percussion. So first of all, we can look in depth at strings. Uh, so the string family is integral to the orchestra. They are all played with bows made of things like horsetail hair, believe it or not. So they cause the string to vibrate, making the sound. So often violins or maybe some violas play the melody of a song in an orchestra. And cello and bass will often play the bass line as they are much deeper and bigger. This is why you can find many string quartets made up of these four instruments because they all go together well and can do any part. Um, so, who's part of the family? So we've got the violin, the viola, the cello, the bass, and also in an orchestra, you may find a harp. So, next up, we've got brass instruments. Here we go. So brass adds to the music something that nothing else really can. They make a very unique sound. So brass instruments make a deep booming sound most of the time or are definitely capable of doing so. The bigger the deeper, as obviously the sound has more area to resonate around. So that's why you can see the instruments usually consist of a network of pipes. You can see on the left. Um, Slightly, just a bit like an organ in some sort of way, but on a smaller scale. And there's a part to blow in, and then the wide bit at the end is where the sound comes out after going through the instrument. Um, so, yeah. In the brass family is the trumpet, cornet, a French horn, things like the euphonium, trombone, and baritone horns tuba and even the saxophone. So here we go. Next is woodwind. So wooden instruments are played with a mouthpiece and were traditionally made of wood. They can create a very large range of sounds. So yes, yeah, so a thing like a bassoon is on the bass clef and very low. And then the piccolo is petite, quite a small instrument, and it makes a very high sound. So they can be good at playing melodies, but especially with things like the bassoon, they play bass lines and nice little accompaniments. Members of the woodwind family include the bassoon, the clarinet, the flute, the oboe, the English horn, the recorder and the saxophone. So now we have the percussion family. So, um, percussion is a very special type of instrument, very different to the others that we've talked about. Most of the percussion instruments do not play actual notes and are not in tune, only beats and make sounds. So, the, although the timpani can make, play a couple of notes, it can be tuned and that is the same in a way for the snare drum as it can play different sounds. There are many different types of percussion instruments, which are mainly just collectively known as drums like timpani, snare and bass. So in the percussion family, you'll find instruments like timpani, xylophone, cymbals, triangles, snare drum, bass drum, tambourine, maracas, gongs, chimes, castanets, 
and even a piano as of the way that you hit the keys and it makes a sound so that is an in-tune percussion instrument here we have next i'm going to look at a topic that we spent a lot of time on musical notation so first of all this symbol is the treble clef and you see this at the start of a piece in the treble clef key um so that symbolizes there the notes you're going to be playing and how high it is and then the other key here is the bass clef so those notes are deeper and the layout is slightly different on the stave a time signature goes at the start of a piece so in this picture it says that the top is the number of beats per bar and the bottom is the note duration that has been chosen to represent a single beat so four over four is four beats in a bar one two three four one two three four and on the picture on the right you can see that here there's three beats in a bar two beats in a bar of four so three beats is like a waltz one two three that kind of thing then a bar line just symbolizes the end of a bar and then the beginning of the new bar this is a repeat mark so when you see one of these in a piece of music that means you go back to where if you've seen another repeat mark in any part of the piece before it meaning that you then just repeat from there or you go back to the start if there isn't one until you get to the repeat mark and then keep going so here we've got some types of beats so a crotchet right on the left of the screen that's a one beat note a quaver half beat note semi briefs are four beat notes minims last for two beats and then there's a crotchet rest on the right of the slide which is a one beat rest so you don't play for one beat there notes on the stave so if you look at the treble clef first of all it starts with the deepest note being middle c and then it goes up in alphabetical order until you get to G and then back to goes back to A. So if you look on the stave, there's a lot of rhymes you can help to remember them. So on on lines, there's things like every good boy deserves football or every good boy deserves flicking. I like that one. I was taught that by my first guitar teacher. And then in the spaces, it spells face. Um, so that's often used as well by teachers. And then if you look at the bass clef, there's also various rhymes here. You can see that just starts on a very low E at the bottom there and then goes up again in alphabetical order. So thank you for listening to my presentation. I spent a lot of time on this and I hope that you've enjoyed it.